the way forward for us is that we have to start learning how we are really designed. We have to live that design. Not just when you're in a hospital because you're sick and you pull out that anatomy. It's like when I hear people say, well, all we can do now is pray. As if, you know, it's like God in the SOS system. Either you have a theology or you don't. But it's not an emergency system. Either you understand something about the nature of the divine and you are connected to it, or you're not. And if you're not, if you have questions about it, like I don't even know what I believe, but I want to believe something because there's something missing in my life. Then start there. Then start there. So this is all, a, to me, this is the path of the highly, of the new functioning human being who has to know your, the anatomy of your soul, the anatomy of your, your body, the anatomy of your spirit, all your multiple anatomies and your theology, organic theology. God in your blood and in your bones. This is how the mystical laws work. You have to understand, for every choice you make, there's a consequence, and there is. You may not see that consequence. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, but you have to know there's a consequence, period. And, and, and it's no mistake that whether you look at it and do unto others as you would have them do unto you, or you look at the, or the law of karma, what goes around and comes around, this is a law of a universe. And you are subject to that law because it is part of nature. It is part of nature. This rules our nature, period. And no amount of money, no thinking you're special, no place you live, no, 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 no amount of anything allows you to break any law of nature. I don't care if you name your kids sunshine meditation karma. <laughs> and and you, you raise your kids saying, oh, isn't my kid special? Your kid's subject to the laws of the universe. No one. Anyone who, who, who lives with the idea that they were born to be special is going to suffer and suffer a lot. Specialness is a curse. And we'll get to that. An absolute curse. One of the worst things you could tell yourself. Much less your children. They may be special to you, but they are not special in life. They are just children. No, don't tell me that. Yeah, I am going to tell you that. The best thing I could tell you. Okay, teach them the nature of their nature. So, before I tuck you in, does this sound like an okay agenda? Do you have any questions before we go to bed? Anybody? Okay. Well, yeah. So if everything operates on the laws of the universe, when you started talking tonight, you talked about having new thoughts coming in. Like how do we have new unique how do we have new unique ideas or thoughts when everything seems prescribed by the laws of the universe? What do you mean things are prescribed by the laws of the universe? Prescribed meaning operate under the laws of the universe. Of course. In, in my mind, I'm imaging like uh, gears uh, that are... They don't control new thoughts. They don't control okay. new thoughts. There's the, the whole system of, of inspiration, prayer, angels. Oh, oh, that's all new thought. What you do with them is where the laws come in. You know, you look, it, it, laws don't control your new thought. 
you decide, I have an idea. What am I going to do with it? If we're operating in the laws of the universe. Right. Now, I mean, look at this. You're, you're, you're thinking very, you're doing it the different way. The universe is structured and held together with laws. Gravity, cause and effect, sensation, vibration. These are neutral laws. They're not manipulating us like, like marionettes. Laws, orbits, tides. These, these are neutral governing laws. Okay? Yes, I got that. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. So like the tides, there's always waves and they're always going to be in that same configuration. Um, there's no such thing as a wave that's in the same configuration. Or the, so there's, uh, yeah, okay, good point. So there's a similarity to all the waves when you sit there on the beach watching them come in. So where do you get a unique wave, I guess? They're every one of them. Gotcha. <laughs> Everything is always unique. Now, you want to ride the waves, drown in them, it's all your choice. Paint them, photograph them. What you do with the wave is up to you. And they'll be different in every, every single second. The wise person learns to work with the tides. There's a tide. I don't go, I don't, I don't, I don't go out there when I know the tide's coming in. It's a stupid thing to do. And I get to make that choice every day because the tide goes out and comes in every day. I work with the tides. People have tides. There's an energy in the tide of the day, as well as in the tide of the water. I have to learn to work with that. There's an, a tide in me. When the tide goes out, I'm really foolish to take something on that requires all the energy coming in. I have to learn to work with my tides. See how it works? But if I make a decision to do something when the tide's going out, when I'm being drained and it's pooling, I'm held accountable for that. So now it's switched to prayer. And if someone decides to pray, oh God, please like, cover that up, make it go away. You can't you can't have a prayer, a prayer will not be answered that cannot be answered. You can't have something go away that you did. Don't pray for something that can't be given. Like, I want to wake up 50. <laughs> and if I can't have that, then you don't exist. Don't pray for something that can't be given and then decide the gods don't exist which is what people do. If I can't have what I want, then you don't exist. You hear me? You don't, you don't, you don't. You have to understand how the universe works. You're held responsible for your stupidity. <laughs> and for your brutality. And you are truly, truly protected. And You have a grace bank account, and it's in your best interest to do good things. Because you have a bank account, and it pays dividends. And it just is what's so. And, they're, they're, and the laws of the universe are such that they are unyielding in the physical world. There is nothing anybody can do. Nothing, nothing, nothing that can stop the law of gravity from making this car, what do you call this thing, cup crash into the floor. Nothing, zero. 
but in the world of the soul and in the mystical world. The mystical law of gravity is gravitas. To give a choice, to make a choice that decides I'm going to give weight to something that hasn't yet had any weight to it. I am going to put the weight in it. So I've, I say to you, that's, that's, that's a, I would never wear that shirt or blouse or whatever you're wearing. I would never wear it. Now up until that moment, we didn't have any gravitas or weight going on at all. Nothing, we didn't say anything. Now I just say a silly remark. A bunch of air, a bunch of words, nothing. And it's up to you to decide whether or not you're going to attach yourself to these sounds, to these words, to, to put weight, gravity, to use the law of the universe, to densify that. You attach yourself. She can't say that to me. I think what I will do, like the book of Genesis, is breathe my breath into that remark. And with that, birth happens. And that silly bunch of nothing suddenly is given form and function. And it becomes something real, not to me, but to you. And now you've given a silly nothing a place in your head, in your cell tissue, in your memory bank, in your lifeline. Thought is now becoming form. You've given it weight. You've densified it. You have given it gravitas in the mystical world. And with that, it begins its incarnation into your body and into the body of your life. It becomes a story you tell people. You know what she said to me? You start the narrative. You start the story. You start to incarnate it at dinner tables and at lunch tables. You start to blog about it. You begin to build a life around the story of the day she said, your outfit's terrible. <laughs> and you build it bigger and bigger and bigger and pretty soon it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Why the day she said, your wardrobe's horrible. And the narrative gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And now it becomes part of your ID. She's the woman who, sh who, who she said her wardrobe was horrible and her children. <laughs> and now it becomes so big that you can't get rid of it. You can't get rid of it. Getting rid of it would mean, well, my God, who would I be? I'd be the woman without that narrative. I would have nothing if I got rid of it. I'd be nothing, but the whole thing was nothing. But now it has so much weight, W-E-I-G-H-T, that it's who you are. It's who you are. You've densified it. And now it's become built into your cell tissue. And now you've given so many cell tissues that they've clustered around each other and they become a tumor. That's how it happens. That makes sense to you? Yeah. Is forgiveness the undensifier? Oh, we'll get to that tomorrow. Don't go there. <laughs> Boring! Get to it tomorrow. I'm sending you to bed. I'm, I don't know what time it is here. 8.30. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to send you to bed, but I'm going to do that with a prayer because we need a prayer. I, I love this. I want you to imagine that when you go to sleep tonight, angels are over you. Look at the night sky and imagine angels are hovering over you. When you go, just say, I take me out of my body. Take me out and heal me tonight. Heal whatever part of me needs healing. Take me to the healing realm and work on me. Take my mother with me if your mom needs healing. Take your partner, your wife or your husband, whoever needs healing. 
Angels take them to the healing realm. Pour grace into them. Imagine them being repaired through the night with all the grace of God and all the miracles that are done. And then imagine being tucked back into your body as dawn comes and you wake up and you feel something miraculous has happened. I feel something has happened. My body feels more vital. Hover over me, God. Amen.